In this video, I want to take a look at solving absolute value equations that contain two absolute value expressions. And we're going to look at two separate examples, and in each example I kind of want to tackle these problems two different ways. Now, one of these ways is interesting, but not very practical, and the other way is much more practical, but probably not very interesting. So let's go ahead and look at this first example. We have the absolute value of 2x minus 3, and that equals the absolute value of 3x plus 2. So remember when solving absolute value equations normally, we have to isolate the absolute value expression, and then I have to break it up into two separate equations, one for the positive and one for the negative. Well, looking at this one, this is probably the most basic form of a dual absolute value equation because there are no values outside. There's no variables outside the absolute values, and there's no numbers. It's just strictly an absolute value equaling another absolute value. So I only need to break this up into two different values. I need to take when 2x minus 3 equals 3x plus 2, so this is positive and this is positive. And then I need to take it where the 2x minus 3 is positive, but then this one's negative. So negative 3x minus 2. Okay? We could also do where this one's negative, and this one's positive, and this one's negative, and this was negative. But you would see that we're just basically duplicating these because there are no values outside the absolute value expressions. And in the second example, I'll get more into that and tell you what I mean. So let's go ahead and solve these two equations. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 3x from both sides here. And so I have negative x and then add 3 to both sides. So negative x equals 5. So x equals negative 5. So that's one of our values. And here let's go ahead and add 3x to both sides and then add 3 to both sides. So those will cancel and those will cancel. So 5x equals 1. So x equals 1 fifth. So we have two values here. We have negative 5 and 1 fifth. So let's go ahead and plug these values back in just to kind of make sure they work. So let's do the negative 5 first. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10, minus 3 is negative 13, and then of course the absolute value of negative 13 is positive 13. Negative 5 times 3 is negative 15, plus 2 is negative 13, and again the absolute value of negative 13 is 13. So the negative 5 works just fine because 13 equals 13. Let's try the 1 fifth. So we have 2 times 1 fifth, so that's going to make 2 fifths, and I'll kind of jot down my work down here. And then I'm going to subtract 3 from that, so really I'm subtracting 15 fifths. So that'll give me negative 13 fifths, and so the absolute value of that will turn into positive 13 fifths. The other one is 3 times 1 fifth, so that's 3 fifths, and I'm going to add 2 to that, so add 10 fifths, and that will give me 13 fifths as well. So both of these values work. So this is probably the more traditional way to solve this, probably the more practical than interesting way, is just go ahead and we take this one's positive and this one positive, and that's this side, and then this one positive and this one negative, and we kind of come up with this side, and there's our two values for that. You'll notice over here I have written the absolute value of x is the same as the square root of x squared. So this is something we know, and it's a property we use, and so I want to take a look at using that property for this type of example. So instead of having the absolute value of 2x minus 3, I want to write it as the square root of 2x minus 3 squared. And I'm going to kind of revamp this equation using this property. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite it down here. So it's going to be the square root of 2x minus 3 squared equals the square root of 3x plus 2 squared. And so to get rid of the radicals, let's square both sides. So I can do that using the properties of equality here. So I'm left with 2x minus 3 squared equals 3x plus 2 squared. And so I'm going to go ahead and square these both out. So I end up with, on the left side, 4x squared minus 12x plus 9. And on the right side, 9x squared plus 12x plus 4. 
Well, okay. Well, my x squared coefficient is 9 here and 4 here, so let's go ahead and move all the terms from this expression over to the right side, because I need it equal to 0, because it's a quadratic. So 5x squared plus 24x minus 5. And so I can solve this, of course, using the AC method. So I'm going to break this middle term, that linear term, down into two separate factors. So 25x minus x, and then use factor by grouping here. So 5x, and that's an x plus 5, and a minus 1, and an x plus 5. And so I end up with 5x minus 1, and x plus 5, and that equals 0. So my values here are, well, lo and behold, 1 fifth and negative 5 which 1 fifth and negative 5 were the values we had up here as well. So it's an interesting take on this using this property that we have. The absolute value ends up being the square root of the square of that value. So we can kind of look at solving this a different way by creating a couple of quadratics here and then solving that quadratic equation. Again, probably not very practical because that's a whole lot more work than we did previously, but I think it's interesting. And the second example that we're going to look at, um, definitely more interesting. So here's how to solve that initial equation here with two absolute value expressions. In this second example, you see once again we have two absolute value expressions in this equation. And outside the absolute values, I have these constants, a minus 6 and a positive 8. So kind of what I'm going to do right off the bat, just to simplify this a bit, is add 6 to both sides just to limit the number of terms I have outside those absolute values. So the absolute value of 4x plus 3 is going to be 14 minus the absolute value of 2x plus 1. Okay, so in the last example, we looked at separating this out into two separate equations, one where this was positive and this was negative. Well, since we have other things going on here, we have this number outside the absolute value, so it's not going to be as simple as just two equations run and go with it. We're actually going to have four different cases that we're going to work with, because this first absolute value could be positive or negative, and this second absolute value could be positive or negative. So we have to make equations for every possible combination. Positive, 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 negative, negative, positive, and negative, negative. Okay, so let's go ahead and build these equations and we'll solve them. So 4x plus 3, and that's our positive, equals 14 minus, and because this is a minus here, and this is a quantity, this 2x plus 1, we're going to have to put it in uh, parentheses here, okay? So that's positive, positive. And so our second one here is going to be positive, negative. So 4x plus 3 equals 14. And when I say negative, basically what I'm going to do is just change this sign to a positive, so 2x plus 1. Okay, so case number three and case number four will be where this first absolute value of expression is negative. So we're going to have negative 4x minus 3, and that's going to equal 14 minus my 2x plus 1, so that's the positive side, and then minus minus. So we'll have negative 4x minus 3 equals 14 plus 2x plus 1, because we turn this minus into a plus, and that's what I mean by the minus side on that one. So I have four separate equations, so four possible values here. So let's go ahead and work, and we'll just solve each one of these equations. So for the first one, 4x plus 3 equals 14, and then of course we need to distribute that negative through. And then the negative 2x I can bring over to make positive 2x, so 4 and 2 is 6x. 14 minus 1 is 13, and then when I bring this positive 3 over, it's 13 minus 3, so 10. So x will equal 5 thirds on this first one. Okay, so the second one here, again, let's bring the 2x over and make it a minus 2x. So 4 minus 2 is 2x. 14 plus 1 is 15, minus 3 is 12. 
So in this one, x equals 6. So again, let's go ahead and distribute that negative. So 14 minus 2x minus 1. The negative 2x let's bring over, so negative 4x plus 2x makes negative 2x. And 14 minus 1 is 13, and then plus 3 is 16. So x equals negative 8. And our final one, let's bring this 2x over as a minus 2x, so that's negative 6x. 14 plus 1 is 15, plus 3 is 18, so x equals negative 3. So now that we have four possible values, we kind of need to check to see what works and what doesn't work. And maybe all of them do, maybe none of them do. But we need to check them out. So our values were x equals 5 thirds, 6, negative 8, and negative 3. And our original equation was the absolute value of 4x plus 3 minus 6 equals 8 minus the absolute value of 2x plus 1. So let's go ahead and kind of plug all these values in, see what works, see what doesn't work. So x equals 5 thirds. Let's go ahead and check this one first. So 4 times 5 thirds is 20 thirds. And when I add 3, that's like adding 9 thirds. And it's the absolute value of that minus 6 or minus 18 thirds when I get common denominators for everything. So 20 and 9 makes 29, and 29 minus 18 will be 11 thirds for the left side. And my right side uh, is going to be, let's see, I have an 8, so let's go ahead and make that 24 thirds minus. So 2 times 5 thirds is 10 thirds plus 1 is 3 thirds. So 10 plus 3 is 13, and it's positive. So, 24 minus 13 is 11, and it's over 3. So, 11 thirds equals 11 thirds. So, that first one works just fine. Okay, that's probably the hard one because it's a fraction. The rest of these won't be too bad to do a quick check on. So, let's use 6. 4 times 6 is 24, and 3 is 27. Absolute value of that is 27 minus 6 is 21. See, much quicker. So 6 again, so 2 times 6 is 12, plus 1 is 13, absolute value, so 8 minus 13, uh-oh, 8 minus 13 is a negative 5, so that is a no-go. So let's check uh, x equals negative 8. Okay, so 4 times negative 8 is negative 32, plus 3 is a negative 29, absolute value is positive 29, minus 6 is 23. And then 8 minus, well, I know since this is positive, there's no way this one's going to work out. So 2 times negative 8, negative 16, plus 1, negative 15, positive 15, 8 minus, that is negative 7. Yeah, so no bueno on that one. Okay, last one, x equals negative 3. Let's check this turkey out. So 4 times negative 3 is negative 12, plus 3 is negative 9. Absolute value is 9. 9 minus 6 is 3. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6, plus 1 is negative 5, absolute value is positive 5, 8 minus 5 is 3. So that one works. Okay, so we had two yeses and two noes, so my solutions are 5 thirds and negative 3 for that equation. Okay, and again, the way we kind of tackled this problem was we isolated one of the absolute values and kind of got everything else on the other side. And then we worked it where this is positive or negative, and this absolute value expression could be positive or negative. And we walked through and made every possible combination with our positive, negative, positive, negative. And then we went ahead and solved all of those equations independently. We had four possible values we plugged them in, we found what worked and what didn't work, and here's our solution. Well, I kind of want to look at the other way to solve this, and again, uh, probably more interesting, definitely not very practical. But we said earlier that the absolute value of x is the same as the square root of x squared. So we could write our original equation like this. So it's the square root of 
4x plus 3 squared minus 6 equals 8 minus the square root of 2x plus 1 squared. So if you're familiar at all with solving absolute, I'm um, sorry, solving um, square root equations, we'll add 6 first to both sides to isolate one of our square roots. We'll work at squaring both sides, but this square root will still exist, so we'll have to isolate it and square both sides again. And it gets pretty nasty pretty quick when you have multiple square roots in an equation. But you will end up with a polynomial, and that polynomial will be a quartic polynomial. And factoring him isn't very enjoyable. Well, maybe. I suppose it depends on who you are. Okay, so, so you'll end up with this quartic polynomial uh, equation, where this quartic polynomial is equal to zero. When we factor that, it factors down to this. So my values here, based on these factors, are negative 8, negative 3, 5 thirds and 6. Well, that's interesting. Negative 8, negative 3, 5 thirds and 6. Those are my values here. Negative 8, negative 3, 5 thirds and 6. So I had the exact same values come out, but I still had to kind of check to make sure what was right and what wasn't right. So it's not like this method um, exempted me from having to check the values or it knocked out the extraneous values or anything, nothing like that. But it is interesting to kind of turn this absolute value equation into more of a square root equation and solve it. But again, interesting, but not very practical because that's a pretty big polynomial. Uh, but we did get the same values either way. So that's kind of an introduction to solving equations that have absolute value expressions in them, like two of them or more. You could probably use this methodology and solve it if it had three or four. It would definitely take a considerable amount of time and paper, but you can do it. So there's an introduction.